Everybody grab an old book, turn to page 211. 211 in the old
the legacy of the wicked. Well, why didn't I have that in the program? Because I wasn't sure what I was going to preach this afternoon. What do you do when you don't know what sermon you're going to preach? You just don't commit. You don't commit. How do you want to be remembered when you die? You say, well, preacher, I'm going to be gone. I really don't care what they think about me when I'm dead. Uh, when I'm gone, they won't have to think about me at all anymore. The truth of it is, that's not really the way it works. What you do as a believer, as a Christian, what you do and how you live your life for the Lord here in this world has a lasting effect here long after you're gone. I told you it's going to be heavy. What did the wicked and the worldly people and yes, I'm even talking about Christians. How many of you know you can be saved and you can live like the devil if you want to for a while? Until the Lord gets a hold of you. But you can live a, you can live in sin and still be saved. What, what do the wicked and the worldly people leave behind? Let's look at this proverb and, uh, and try to unfold some of it. Number one... In verse number one, the wicked leave behind a heaviness. Look at it. It says, this proverb of Solomon, a wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is a heaviness to his mother. A heaviness. I would say it like this. We do say it like this sometimes. It kind of leaves a dark cloud hanging over. You know how heavy the air's been the last couple of weeks? When uh, you step outside, and, you know, I told my wife, I said, it's no wonder I can't get rid of this cough because every time I step outside and breathe in, I'm sucking in a gallon of water down into my lungs. It, it, it's a heaviness, a dark cloud, we might say. A wicked life leaves behind a dark cloud of depression for those that come along behind. I don't know about you, but but I want my life lived here to be an encouragement to other believers, not a discouragement. I, I want to encourage other believers to keep on in their race for the Lord, the race that's been set before them, just like I did in my race. I want the believers to be encouraged not to give up on God and not to fall out of the race, but to keep on going. I, I don't want to depress those that come along behind me. I want to encourage them. Sometimes wickedness leaves behind a heavy <laughs> cloud of embarrassment. <coughs> a dark cloud of embarrassment. I, I want to be the right kind of an example. I want to be an example to my family, not an embarrassment. But that's what happens. A wicked life leaves behind a heaviness. It's heavy. Dark cloud hanging over. Number two, in verse number two, a wicked life leaves behind, leaves a legacy of no true prophet to show. It says in verse number two, treasures of wickedness profit nothing, but righteousness delivereth from death. <coughs> Now listen to me close this afternoon. This may blow your mind right here, this statement. But a godly legacy is not found in what you leave in your bank account when you die. Do you hear me? Amen. Not about what you leave in your bank account when you die or how much land you leave to your kids or, or uh, whatever it is that you think that that, that it means something. I can tell you this, what's in your bank account often only speaks of the time you wasted should have been doing something for the Lord, but it speaks of time wasted chasing a dog. Wasted time and opportunity. There's nothing sadder, and I've heard this, believe it or not, nothing sadder than for some guy to say, well, there was a time in my life I felt like the Lord was calling me to preach, but I just didn't. I just didn't. It, it, I'm not talking about. The, I'm not talking about saying 
I decided it wasn't the calling of the Lord. I, I could live with that. I'm talking about somebody saying, I felt like I was called to preach. Well, why didn't you? Well, I just didn't. I just didn't. Listen to this. Soul saved, foundations built, ministry started. That's true profit. To leave behind. That, that's true profit in God's book. Of uh, 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 success. I, I don't want the next pastor, the pastor's highland, to have to start all over again. Uh, I want to set up a foundation in my life and in the church that somebody else can build on when I'm gone. <laughs> Wicked life leaves behind no true prophet. To show number three, in verses 4 and 5, a legacy of the wicked is just pure old-fashioned laziness. Verse number 4, He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. He that gathereth in summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in the harvest is a son that causeth shame. Laziness. It's one of the most dangerous characteristics that a believer can teach to those that come behind him is how to be lazy. How to just get by. Can I tell you that work ethic is often hereditary. If you'll teach your kids how to work, they'll work. A lot of times they'll work. Can I tell you this too? Church attendance is also hereditary sometimes. Because, you know, sometimes you... You got a younger generation that won't hardly ever come to church. Well, you look at their mom and daddy, and they didn't come to church like they were supposed to. And grandma and grandpa before them didn't come to church like they were supposed to. My kids, my grandkids that come behind me, probably gonna have a lot of negative things they could say about me, but I want to be remembered as the one who got up in the morning and got busy and got to church when it was time to go to church. <coughs> Number four, verse nine, verse number nine in this proverb, the legacy of a wicked person, what comes behind them is exposed perversion. Verse number nine, he that walketh uprightly walketh surely, but he that perverted his ways shall be known. Sometime after you pass away, after a wicked person passes away, sometime down the road, the, the, the things that they use to justify how they live is going to come out. It's going to be exposed. There'll be a, 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 an exposed perversion of morals. You can justify your sin by saying, well, it's normal or it's culturally acceptable in our day and time. But you need to know that when you die, when you pass on, that that wrong in your life, that moral impurity in your life is not automatically going to be set right, but there'll be another generation that comes along behind you that picks up where you left off, and hey, daddy got by with it, and grandpa got by with it, and mama got by with it, so I can't do it. What about a perversion of Scripture that follows after wicked people? You can twist and, 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 and take a pen knife to the scriptures and take out what you don't want and add some stuff in there just to uh, make it fit your life or fit your agenda or fit what you want to do. And I, and, but you need to know those who follow after you will come along and they'll pick up right where you left off. There, there's great doctrinal error in our world, in our religious world, great doctrinal error nowadays that is widely accepted. Why? Because one generation tolerated people messing around with the next with the scripture, and then the generation after that accepted it to be the truth. It doesn't matter what the scripture says, it's what we accept to be the truth. Yeah, that's what follows after wickedness. Number five, in verse number 24, 
The legacy of the wicked always down and negative. The fear of the wicked, it shall come upon him. In other words, his worst, his worst nightmare always comes true. The fear of the wicked, it shall come upon him, but the desire of the righteous shall be granted. Negative, negativism. Pessimism. I don't want to leave a legacy behind me that I was the person that felt like everything in my life was always bad. Anybody know anybody like that? We've probably been like that a time or two. But that's not the legacy I want to leave behind me. Like that, listen, this guy, he never had a good job. He never had a good day. He never pastored a good church. Uh, everything is always down. Never made any progress in life. And I know that everybody has bad times and low times and hard times and times when things don't go our way and maybe even dreams got shattered. But I want those that come behind me to be able to say the preacher prayed and he asked God to give him something to do and asked God to give him an opportunity and God gave him opportunities and he lived his life happy in the Lord. I don't want to leave a legacy of negativism. In verse number 25, the legacy of the wicked is that of a fleeting life. And the, as the world as the whirlwind passeth, so is the wicked no more. But the righteous is an everlasting foundation. Leaving a legacy of here today and gone tomorrow. Uh, a legacy of nothing but destruction in the wake of my life. I, I, I just don't, I don't want to leave that kind of a memory. The legacy that a person has left no foundation for the next generation to build upon. Just like a whirlwind. Just gone. Did his life just, pla just passed with nothing good to show? I thought about people like, like, uh, people like my wife, her great-grandmother. We just knew her as Granny. So we'll just call her Granny. But Granny... Was a, was, a, was a wonderful person. She had no great wealth to speak of. Uh, no, no spectacular life. She just stayed home and raised her family. And went to church and witnessed to people. But she set up a foundation of faith that the family is still building on today. That's the kind of legacy I want. Something that doesn't just blow away with the wind. So what did it say in verse number 7? The memory of the just is blessed, but the name of the wicked shall rot. It's a good reminder that what we do in this life and what we choose to be involved in in this life, it doesn't just all go away when we die. It doesn't all just get erased when we die, but there's a legacy of memory that lingers on and has an effect on other people in this world. I shudder at the thought of leading someone off into hell because of my sin in this lifetime. I don't want to leave the kind of legacy where I'm still leading people to hell a long time after I'm dead and gone. One of the strange things about a legacy I don't know why it works this way, but it just does. People don't remember so much about how you started out, but they sure remember a lot about how you finished. Now that's not an excuse for a younger generation to live like the devil when they're young, because nobody's going to remember it anyway. But it's an encouragement to the older generation because most of us can testify there's a million things I wished I could go back and do over again. There's a lot of stuff I wished I could change. And of course we can. And I, I can testify, and maybe you, some of you can too, in some ways I didn't start out too good. But I sure do want to finish up well. I want to finish up well. I want to leave a legacy of faith. 
I like the song with Susie sings, May all who come behind me find me faithful. Legacy of faith. Let's stand. Lord, we thank you again for allowing us to be in your house. Lord, we thank you for this good day and this good church. The people that we can gather up in with and worship the Lord and preach your word. Lord, we pray that you would give us, thank these words, these truths we've heard today deep down in our hearts. Might give us encouragement along the way this week as we try to serve you. Lord, we ask that you bless our service in the nursing home this afternoon. <coughs> Bless Brother Henry as he brings a message. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs>